This section will focus on Kratos' big claim about John and see how well it holds up under scrutiny. There's a far bigger issue here, and this is the point where I actually have to stop the video and talk about it. And that's the extremely dishonest method John is using to respond to other people here. Once could be an accident, twice a coincidence, but three times is a pattern. With Indigo Gaming, he took his quote out of context and responded to it in such a way that it was convenient to debunk the out of context quote. Out of context is debatable, but convenient? I'll have to disagree with you on that. And you can't debunk a opinion, you can just argue with it and give your own perspective on it, which it seems like John was trying to do in this section. He additionally strawmanned Indigo by adding in the issue of realism which was not something Indigo mentioned. Indigo Gaming using such vague phrasing such as you are mystically stripped of any intimidation or combat capability while in little lamplight, breaking immersion and disappointing fans of the original games where one could threaten, kill, or attack anything in the wasteland without limitation, but not without consequence. Paired with statements like the stricter narrative and forced scenario design proved antithetical to the very core of Fallout games, peaking in one of the more notorious mainline quests, which leads you through a fort manned by children. And given John says, now I find this confusing, which is probably why he brings in the issue of realism in relations to immersion. And you can't murder children? Really, that should be a little bit obvious why John would think these two arguments are related here. If I'm to understand Indigo Gaming's argument correctly, then he's also including the fact that there are several unkillable NPCs who are essential to the quest into this criticism. At least that's my impression of it. But it's not clearly explained in this entire section of this video, for Fallout 3 at least. John's misreading of Indigo Gaming's criticism is completely understandable given the context that is given to it in this section. It might be an unintentional straw man, but that's more something caused by Indigo Gaming's poor explanation of his criticism of Fallout 3 that could have been avoided if he went more into depth with his explanation instead of spending just a minute on it. And further applied it to an entirely different part of the game in order to debunk it. The associated quest that you're sent to complete that John segues into. The associated quest you're sent to complete is actually a really excellent example of a good Fallout quest. Was something mentioned by Indigo Gaming in this section. The only options were to convince them through having a high speech skill, having a particular perk, or performing the quest they demand you to do. Since this is one of the clear conditions for entering Little Lamplight, calling it entirely different part of the game seems to be very dishonest framing by Kratosis. With H-Bomb criticizing Autumn as a villain, he again took an out of context quote and left the substance of what H-Bomb was saying out and singled out the line that Autumn is just some guy that is talked down and leaves, which John then used as a whataboutism fallacy to complain about Lanius and completely ignored the entire criticism H-Bomb was actually making. I can see why Creed is calling this a whataboutism fallacy, but is it really one? Sure, John is changing the subject to focus on, but does it meet the other criteria, implying that all criticism is invalid? I don't believe so, and that's not something Creed proves to any what of a good degree. The argument can be made for it, but in reality, it's rather weak. This is how I look at it. Just like H-Bomber guy, John tries to use a comparison. Instead of comparing Colonel Autumn to the Master, John compares him to Lanius. John does not invalidate the criticism of Colonel Autumn. He sort of sidesteps it. But he does go on to explain story-wise why Colonel Autumn works better as an in-boss compared to Lanius. 
John then springboards off this point to levy a criticism at Fallout 3's engine, similar to H-Bomber Guy, pretty much everyone else who played this game before the patch. Even mechanically, I think Autumn Surrender actually works better, because Fallout 3's speech system utilised both charisma and speech skills, and that meant that you couldn't just shove skill points into speech, you actually had to be a charismatic individual as well, and even then, you could fail. But in New Vegas, my most common build is Charisma 1 Speech 100, a person so lacking in charisma that Doc Mitchell mutters I must be suffering from frontal lobe damage, and even then, I can talk down the Butcher of the East. You know what, as we're already on the ending, let's briefly talk about the ending, because it's honestly not great. Is it the most direct way to deal with this criticism? Absolutely not. But I do believe comparing Fallout 3's in boss to Fallout New Vegas's in boss is a more apt comparison than Harris's Steel Man version of Fallout 1 and the Straw Man version of Fallout 3. This seems like a much more balanced way of comparing the in bosses of two different games since they're built in the same engine with the same sort of requirements data and design wise. There really isn't much more of a fair way of comparing Bethesda design of in boss to the former interplay method of designing their in boss. The way I look at it is John thought he was matching Harris's style with this type of response. Or maybe, you know, the smugness of each bummer guy in this section just annoyed him a little. He thought he would give him a little pushback. Still, to bring up this point, counter in the way he did, then pivot back basically to agree with Harris about the weakness of the ending of Fallout 3 with the context he felt he needed to add outside of Harris's negative framing could be considered misleading. Call it a whataboutism fallacy if you want. It might be close enough to count, but it is clear Creed is the one stripping John's argument here without any of its context. Now, John takes H-Bomb out of context again and ignores the substance of what he's saying, focusing on the line about following one guy while completely ignoring the fact the H-Bomb's criticism is all about how Fallout 3 leads you around by the nose and never really makes you think about any difficult choices. And H-Bomb is additionally criticizing how overly simplistic most of the main story is. Go to a guy who tells you to go to a guy who tells you to go to a girl who tells you to go to a holotape that tells you to go to a dungeon. There's nothing to really figure out for yourself. It's just a sequence of mindlessly following orders for a large portion of the game. Yeah, John did recontextualize Harris's absurd straw man argument. Frankly, John shouldn't have brought up this line, but Harris's gross oversimplification of the events that led to the rescue of the main character's father from the lolly old man from his alternative virtual reality is a little hard to take seriously. Harris's Argument that is, not the scenario, eh, little corny, but a little neat also. Every Fallout game has its MacGuffins, Fallout 1 has its water chip, Fallout 2 had the get, and Fallout 3 MacGuffin was the father at first, with the knowledge to get Project Purity up and running. I understand John's recontextualization of Harris's argument, probably done in order not to call H-Bomber Guy out for his bullshit, like I just did, which I do believe to be an error on John's part. And frankly, this is what happens when you argue against a criticism Why not actually trying to offend anyone. You need to call out the bullshit for what it is so you can make a counter to it. Even after Vault 112, the main story remains simplistic, with the only major choices being good versus extreme evil options. And again, John recontextualizes H-Bomb's comment and adds shit to it that was never there in the first place. What most people want to talk about is the plot. I've never fully understood the hate here either. At a high level, as I discussed earlier, Key information about the world is unveiled as it becomes relevant, slowly expanding the story from a personal one into one where you're a key figure that deals with major factions, which strikes me as somewhat similar to New Vegas' structure of hunting down the chip in Act 1 and through your actions in that hunt coming to the attention of major players in the world who therefore want to deal with you going forward. 
But some people seem to have a real issue with the structure of Act 1 in Fallout 3. The story of leaving the vault and tracking down your dad. To revisit H Bomber Guy's well-known critique, he dislikes how you move around the game world, running into major players and factions as you go, walking from clue to clue, the overarching story boiling down to, and I quote, you're still following this one guy's trail. Again, I find this an odd criticism, because I've never seen anyone hate on New Vegas' first act, even though it's pretty much exactly the same. You spend the first act trying to track down one guy, who you can run straight to if you know where you're going and how to get there, but most players will be following the road from clue to clue, running into major characters and factions on the way. Weirdly, H Bomber Guy's video even takes a moment to call out the GNR, where you can choose to skip a quest if you can pass a skill check, thereby missing out on content, as if the exact same thing didn't happen in Novak, where the entirety of the rep contest site can be skipped by just breaking into a single terminal in the motel. That wasn't actually the criticism H-Bomb had made against the game. This is something John invented entirely to counter what H-Bomb had said. Or in other words, he's strawmanning him. Seems like Creed is trying to add more context outside of the context that John provided or intended for it to have to make it seem like John was trying to talk about everything outside the first act, which is the only part John was focusing on. The search for your father after you find him, that's it. That's the first act. This just is another manipulation of John's words and more importantly, John's intent. Let's just say for argument's sake, what John did was a straw man. Someone straw man in a straw man of a straw man is truly a crazy thing to do. A straw man inception, so to speak. So for the time being, I'll set many a true nerd's straw man H-bomber guys straw man argument if my viewers will accept that Kratosis straw man John also even if it's not here not enough evidence I understand then at least in my first section where I clearly laid out how Kratosis straw man John so here we have three examples of John responding directly to points from other people's videos and all three times he takes quotes out of context leaves out the important information and the substance of what they were saying just to respond to an extremely cherry-picked line, and even then, he goes above and beyond to twist what was said. And just in this one example, I found two provable instances of bad faith points along with all my other examples just from the limited sections of the video I've broken down so far. In this section alone, that probably put Kratosis about even with John on dishonesty, manipulative language, dodging, whatever you want to call it. And when you compare all of, of Kratosis' logical fallacies to John, John comes out looking much better just from a rhetorical perspective. And any judgment Creed wants to apply to John, applies even more to himself by his own logic. The double standards of <laughs> this video are mind-boggling. Frankly, I don't want to continue to play this hypocritical section of Kratos' video any further. If you want to watch Creed's video instead of mine, by all means, there's a link in the description. Like always, you can watch his 8-hour long video and come to conclusions on your own. It makes me wonder why he had to add almost two hours to this video after he remade it. But let me let him explain in his own words. In 2019, I first made a response to many a true nerd's video, Fallout 3 is better than you think. This was made when I was still fairly new to YouTube, as someone actually making videos, and admittedly, I didn't handle it as well as I could have. My arguments were clumsily constructed, I threw out unnecessary insults, and generally, the video could have been a lot better. Despite being just under two years ago that that video was uploaded, I feel I've improved considerably, to the point I'm in the process of remaking a couple of my other videos as well, because they don't meet my current standard either. I completed part two of the response in October of 2019, and received plenty of valid criticism in the comments. Criticism I took to heart. I really don't understand how he can state half the things he does without realizing how it will come off to most viewers. This just drips. If I don't insult him directly, no one will be able to criticize me. That's not how language and communication works. 
There are plenty of other sections where Creed comes off as just so smug and self-righteous, like here. When it's pretty clear-cut, just like the slavers earlier. Braun is clearly shown to be an evil and horrible person from the fact he gets off on tormenting people. From the very fact that Old Lady Dithers has memories of the torment, it's proof enough alone that putting them out of their misery is objectively the correct option. Statements like this just make me think that Kurtosis is very limited in his capacity to critically think about subject matters like this. I don't know how I can take his opinion seriously just by saying something like the objectively correct option does not make it true. There are objectively many different ethical systems out there that many people can operate under. I don't even need to qualify that statement because that is a fact. Of course, he explains his reasoning for this, and I would like to debate him about it, not that he ever would, or take any criticism of any type, or challenge his own viewpoints. Still, none of that matters. There is no correct in ethics or philosophy. Only someone so sure of their own opinion would be so dismissive of others. And so uneducated to think anyone who thought critically about this wouldn't think this video, or at least this statement, is just bullshit. Even if most people would be too nice or would have given up on this video far before this point. There's much more I can add to this video, but in reality, I think I've done enough. I've proven the points I wanted to and covered the sections I were curious about. And frankly, I titled this video, Kratosis Isn't Better Than Many a True Nerd, for primarily one reason. I always try to use titling conventions very similar to the video I'm covering instead of that boring re Fallout 3 isn't better than you think, but it's been a long process, and now that I have time to think and reflect on it, it is a fitting title to have, because Kratosis is not better than John of Many a True Nerds channel. But I'm not saying that he's any worse. Subjectively, I believe so, but I'm not really even a fan of John of Many True Nerds. He's a Let's Player who does some video essays on the side, something that I don't respect too much. You can get a little bit from him, but that's about it. I can say Creed will definitely have a hard time with how negative and niche his content is at this current moment. Seriously, the guy used the many a true nerds quote from Reddit that negativity is his brand. At the start of one of his videos, I really hope he doesn't do it again. It just really says a lot about him. Frankly, it's just a little crazy to let your hypothetical opponent define who you are and how you're going to go through this path on whatever YouTube process you want to walk down. And the way he deals with criticism also makes me feel like he might have a mental breakdown at some point in the future if he just doesn't chill out and relax about all this stuff. Many a true nerd or John has the opposite problem. He'll see videos like Kratosis's and other people who are negative and go on the attack similar to Mauler, Wolf, Critical Drinker, and just dismiss all their points out of hand. Negativity is not something to be accepted in his worldview. It's all about spreading positivity. And while that's all fine and dandy, it causes some confusion and some dance around certain subject matters, but that's also marketing. And that will also lead to him preaching this to his fans and cultivate that general attitude in them also, not wanting to deal with the harsh realities of certain subject matters. I would like to say that's a good thing, but that is something that will divide the two camps of overly positive and overly negative critics and their fans. On this particular issue, I can see his intent and can even understand it, even if I do think there are some major flaws with this philosophy.
Frankly, I stand on neither side. You gotta take the bad with the good. There are upsides and downsides to each. Why it seemed like I was harsh on Creed in this video, trust me, I could have gone much harder on him. Playground tactics and logic I've seen him display is frankly laughable to me. And if he continues on the path he's treading, it will probably be very self-destructed to him and possibly others. Who knows? I don't know the future. And maybe he'll mellow out. Or maybe he'll explode. Who knows? He can call me dishonest and disingenuous all he wants like him and his fans have been doing for a while now. Shit talk is all he has. And frankly, I can understand the appeal of that. But if you don't at least try to understand your critic, then you'll never grow. You'll evolve into a low cow with a tight-knit community to treat you like some sort of demigod or some crap like that. This is how all this shit tends to go. You'll have your core base, but no one that doesn't share your opinions or worldview will be able to agree with you unless you can induct them into the cult. You can become like each bomber guy, you know, stop with your hot takes and focus on other stuff and rarely put out an actual video. Get mad and quit YouTube like Mr. Caption, or maybe tap into another market, you know, away from gaming. Plenty of other things to do on YouTube for views if that's your thing. Not really my particular thing, I just do what I want. I've been dicking around on YouTube for many years now, just doing whatever I felt like. I don't really think I'll ever become a big channel, nor do I care. My current focus is media criticism. Mostly just dissecting how it works, what's good, what's bad, and eventually get into it myself. I'm still rough with it, but I would like to learn. I would like to try new things, and I like to explore and argue over different ideas. I'm planning to do at least one more live stream just to get this whole saga over with. I'm done with the Fallout 3 critics. Kratosis was my third one. But anyone who wants to argue with me, I'll have one last live stream that I'll provide my Discord ID or whatever, how you want to get in touch with me if you want to argue with me on that. Doubtful, but gotta put it out there. And after that, I'll be done.